So when the Startup Health team asked me to speak here, I knew exactly what I wanted to talk about. The power of self-awareness and how that mindset is helping me to achieve a personal moonshot. But as I was putting together the talk, I was having a really hard time with some of the details. So I was talking to my daughter about this, and she says, well, why don't you just start by talking about how hard it was to write this, since you're supposed to be self-aware. So in that vein, I want to have an honest conversation with you about how self-awareness is really shifting my life. So I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm out places, I feel like people are constantly trying to put some kind of label on me and figure out what my deal is. Like, where am I from? What's my deal? So a couple of weeks ago, I was at a campaign party in New York City, and this guy comes up to me and he stops me, and he's like, are you from Texas? And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, you look like a cowboy. You just need the boots. Which I felt like was a very weird perception of New Yorkers about uh, Texans. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, this guy comes up to me and asks me if I'm uh, Irish and happen to be a Boston detective, which I felt like was also oddly specific. And a couple of years ago, I kept having people come up to me and say, where did you inherit your fortune? Which I wish was really true. But what people don't guess is that I was raised in a fundamentalist Jewish community. It was a community that was pro-life, violently anti-gay, a community that believed that evolution was a hoax and believed that the world was, in fact, 6,000 years old. And what they also don't ever guess is that this is me at age 19 on the day of my arranged marriage. I left religion when I was 25, which was one of the hardest things for me to do. Hard because I didn't know what was real. I didn't know what emotions I had were real. I didn't know what facts I had were real. And it started me on this path of exploration. I founded my first startup around that time, went on to have two exits with my co-founder. And um, as I was going through this process, I then founded this uh, consultancy that was working with NIH and behavioral research scientists. And we were looking at how we could change behavior by tapping into people's story by helping them to be honest with themselves about why they believed something and getting them to shift that story to change their behavior. But at the same time all of that is going on, I feel like in many ways I wasn't being honest with myself. Um, I was working crazy hours, and on the outside, everything looked really great, so business was great, my kids were doing really well, but on the inside, I was really suffering. I had been suffering from chronic depression, that I had persisted from age 13 to 37. It was bad enough that my psychiatrist said that he felt like it was untreatable and that that was just sort of my uh, fate and what I was going to have to deal with. Around that time, I joined uh, Startup Health and they started talking to me about these entrepreneurial mindsets and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I'm just trying to get through my day. I have this moonshot that I want to achieve and this rest of this stuff, like, is just not that important to me. Yes, yeah, sorry. But the pain of this depression became strong enough um, that I got to this place where I'd come home at night and I would say, you know, nobody really has to live this way. It's really not fair that anybody has to live this way. And around that time, I went down to Florida to visit some friends, and they had this daughter who was seven years old who kept pestering me for the entire day. And she's coming up to me and bugging me all day, asking me, are you a boy or are you a girl? And she's asking me this all day long, and I was like, leave me alone. And <laughs> at the end of the day, she stopped me, and she looks at me, and she says, don't you know who you are? And I took that time during that moment to realize that I had all this information about myself. My friends used to call me gender ambiguous. My boyfriends used to call me their boyfriend. But I refused to look at that information because I lived in fear, because the community I grew up in, that was an extremely dangerous thing to do. But got to the point where I was like, I don't care anymore. This pain's too great, I'm gonna do anything. So I got home, I sat my two teenagers down, and I said, um, I need to talk to you guys, and I was so scared. And I looked at them and I said, I think that I'm trans. And my daughter looked at me and she said, 
mom, everybody already knows that. <laughs> and my son, who's 16, looked at me and he's like, that's so great, I'm so happy for you. I'm in the middle of a video game, so can I get back to that? <laughs> So I guess it was not as big of a deal for them. So anyways, my daughter then says to me something that has transformed my life. She looks at me and she says, you know, you are an okay mom, but you are an amazing dad. I think in many ways as entrepreneurs, we block things that we're afraid of, we refuse to look at things inside of ourselves that we think are our vulnerabilities, but those are the spaces where we can be the amazing dad. I want to talk to you about three things that I learned during this period of time uh, of exploration that have really influenced my life. And the first one is radical acceptance. The power that you get when you radically accept who you are, your strengths and weaknesses, what you bring to the table, can really transform your life. And also, as an entrepreneur, I feel like it can really transform your business. So I don't know about you guys, but uh, whenever I used to meet with investors, if they tried to like, push back and challenge me on my business, I would kind of look at them and say, you're obviously not that smart. But it, you know, if I really started to think it through, I felt like my job was to, to, to convince them how they were wrong. And I think about how much information I left on the table because of that. How much information I could have been receiving if I was willing to just listen and accept that somebody else might have a perspective that was valuable for me to take in. The second thing is that you have a place here. Each of you have a place here because you are here. You've made a place for yourself at this table. You don't have to earn that right. You, we can each take ownership over the space that we have. So I have an advisor who, a couple years ago, uh, sat me down. He said, there's three qualities that it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. And one of them is uh, something that I feel like you need to work on. And what he said was, you're like a preacher. And you're a preacher that is standing in the middle of the choir. And instead of getting up on the stage and sharing the vision with the community, you think you're making everybody equal by standing with the choir. But what you're really doing is you're taking away from their voices. You're not allowing them to find their own voices. Part of, that, of knowing that we have a place here is also acknowledging that there's a responsibility that comes with that. And the third thing is, is that your story is your story. Whatever got you here today is the story of what got you here today. We don't have to be afraid of owning who we are and how that process got us here. And it may not be that you like, grew up wealthy, went to Stanford, and that your first startup was some wild success, but that's not what matters. What matters is what is the unique voice that you bring to the table? What is the thing that only you can do? So it would be a mistake for me to say that this has been without any consequence. There have been some things that I've had to deal with as a result of uh, coming out. Um, the biggest one is uh, my brother worked for the Trump campaign. Um, my parents happened to be the rabbis that Roy Moore's wife was referring to when she said they had Jewish friends. So needless to say, <laughs> none of them are that excited about their pro-choice, pro-science, atheist, trans son. It's not really their thing. But I wouldn't trade one day of the acceptance that they could give me for the power that comes from accepting yourself. Thank you. Thanks. I really believe now that if we want to achieve our mission moonshots, it is so critical for us to look at what are our personal moonshots and to recognize that those things can't be separated. We are one whole being and we each have a unique thing we can bring to the table. I want to leave you with just one challenge. Self-awareness is a skill. It's a skill that's honed. It's not something that somebody is going to give to you. It's not some miraculous gift. You have to want it. But each of your voices are meaningful and have something unique to offer to this space. I know for me, this process has been 
entirely worth it. And your challenges are probably different, I would guess. But it's so worth it. And in the words of Brene Brown, when you own your own story, you get to write the ending. Thank you.